everyone. This is Brittany Bond and welcome back to the podcast. Today I'm going to be dropping some truth bombs about sex. Uh, I love talking about sex. I think it's so fun and juicy. And today I want to give you some tips on how to enjoy your sex life more and also to let go of some of the programming that we have around sex because it's one of the most it's one of the things that we think about the most and we have so much suppression around and also it's the thing that we desire to connect on with the people that we love you know it's like something that we want so much that but most people don't talk about at least to the people that they need to speak to about it so my if you listen to any of my podcasts about sex I invite you to I have made a couple of them um, but my my journey around my sexual exploration has been how do I how do I enjoy my own sex life the most and how do I bring or allow myself to receive the most amount of pleasure that I can in my life through this exploration I was raised in a cult if you didn't know this um, where you know, sexual enjoyment was very suppressed and I was a virgin until I got married at 18. And I, yeah, there was no like talk about sex unless it was like something very negative, like, you know, within the religion it's like, don't masturbate, you know, don't think of anyone sexually. Um, you know, when you were dating someone, you had to always have a chaperone, like someone had to, that you were never allowed to be alone with the person that you were about to marry. So, because in case you might have sex with them, you know, like there was just so much of like this, like sex is this huge deal that we don't really talk about. And yet everyone's thinking about all the time. And it's actually something that is like really shameful because, um, you know, if you do it outside of marriage, it's like, I don't know, you're going to hell or whatever, or like something really bad is going to happen. So it has been a long journey for me to come to the point where I have been <clears throat> feeling really empowered to talk to not only enjoy sex, not only like it, allow myself to receive pleasure, but also to talk about it. Like it's such a beautiful thing to speak about. And so in this journey, I've done a lot of research and I've taken a lot of workshops and I've read a lot of books and I've talked to a lot of people and I host play parties, which is uh, no penetration, no penile penetration sex parties, basically. Um, and so I have heard because of my position in the community and because of hosting these, I've had so many people bring their stories of their sexual uh, exploration and journey to to me um, because they feel safe to share that with me and I love that and I realize like wow this is something that I really enjoy sharing with people and the thing that I realized about <clears throat> sex and and enjoying sex and and feeling comfortable in our sexuality is that it is one of the most rebellious things that you can do is to allow yourself to enjoy pleasure I just want to let that sink in. In today's society, it is one of the most rebellious things you can do is to feel empowered in your sexuality and to allow yourself to receive pleasure in your body. Because the world, <clears throat> the system that we live in, that we were born into currently, that we're actively all changing by waking up and dropping more into our bodies the one that yeah that we're currently at right now where we're at in the world is it's a lot about like suppression around our sexuality and this is through our governments through our religions through just kind of pop culture you know ways of looking at sex and how it's portrayed in our media and we actively each one of us have the opportunity to shift this so this is like <laughs> it's gonna sound funny but like by you allowing yourself to enjoy pleasure you're actively like being like a rebel for the cause of shifting our consciousness on a mass level around sexual empowerment and so each one of us has the ability to shift this in the mass consciousness and 
So today I want to talk about some of the programming that we have. Like I've been doing some research and I want to talk about some of this programming and debunk it around like some of the basic obstacles that we have in sex, like for, for a lot of us. And, um, so this, this podcast is for men and women, like this is, and everyone in between aliens, all different genders, whatever you identify with. Right now I'll talk about like more of the general, like things that happen in between heterosexual, but if you, um, heterosexual like dynamics, but if you, it, this is also can apply to if you, you know, if you are identifying more in the masculine or the feminine. So when it comes to the masculine energy, when it, in, in today's, like today's programming around sexuality, a lot of men or those who identify in the masculine, they feel like they have to go into the bedroom or wherever you're having sex and already know how to do everything in bed. So there's this like performance anxiety that comes. It's like, because you were born with a penis or because you identify more in the masculine, suddenly you're supposed to know everything about sex. And this is not something that like we like say, it's not like in school, someone's like, because you are identifying the masculine, you need to know, no, it's like, this is just something where, this is why I'm saying it's like this societal programming that happens because it's not really spoken about, but it's something where I've spoken to a lot of men and those identifying in the masculine that they just feel like this anxiety, like, yeah, like I'm just supposed to know how to make her come and I'm supposed to like, you know, be like very confident and, you know, do all the things and put her in all these positions and da, 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 da. And you're just like, and it's just, it's a lot, it's a lot to hold. It's a lot of like, and then also like you're supposed to be enjoying yourself, but a lot of men actually don't enjoy sex as much as they could because they're so worried about wanting to look good, wanting to make sure that she enjoys pleasure, wanting to just like basically do a good job. Like, which is already a funny thing to say in, about sex because in my opinion, sex is like this exploration and it's like this game that we're playing and we're just flowing and there's no right or wrong. It's just like being present and being in the moment and connecting to each other. But I'll go more into that later. So this is the masculine, like th this, like I'll call it performance anxiety that happens. And then in the feminine, and those who identify more in the, f with the feminine energy is this feeling that we just have to accept whatever is happening to us in bed and not really comment on it or, or play an active part in the sexual activities that are happening. Like, in the sense of like, I'm just going to lay here and wait for the masculine to initiate and then whatever he wants to do, I will go along with it and, you know, enjoy it or at least pretend like I'm enjoying it. And then afterwards, just be like, that was great. But like, never say like, can we try this position? Or, you know, in the middle, like, no, that doesn't actually feel that good. Can we do this thing? And you know, like play an active role in the sexual pleasure experience. And a lot of this is programming that we have that like women's voices are not really meant to be heard and that like our opinions don't really matter. This is like something in the feminine that we have played out in many different areas of our life, but it happens a lot in our sexual experience. I didn't even realize that that still plays out in my sexual experience. This is like such a deep programming because I identify in the feminine. So I can speak to this one a lot is like, wow, I really thought that I was even more empowered than like, how do I say that? Like, I thought I had it all figured out, not, in, you know, like we're never going to have it all figured out, but I thought like I was fully expressed in my sexuality. And even recently I was like, wow, it's hard for me to speak up for this one thing or I'm shy about saying that, that I, you know, I don't like this or I like this. And that just kind of pisses me off because I'm like, how deep is this? Not like pisses me off, but you know, uh, frustrates me a little bit because I'm like, how deep is this programming? And then I flip it, of course, and I'm like, okay, 
this is just an opportunity to, to keep connecting with my partner and to share really openly and vulnerably like, wow, I think I have some programming here. I'm having a hard time speaking up about this. I feel vulnerable, but I need to share this. And of course, this is what I want to say here is that when you realize that this is like, that like most people go through this to some extent, then you feel less awkward about bringing it up. Because if you're like, oh, this is a normal thing, like most people who identify the masculine go through this, you know, performance anxiety. And most people who identify with the feminine go through this, you know, uh, vulnerability about speaking up for their desires um, and their boundaries and like, you know, basically just vocalizing whatever they want. I think both have a hard time vocalizing, but, you know, yeah. So when you realize this, then you're like, like for me, when I realize this, like whenever I realize there's some programming happening, I'm like pissed off. I'm like, no, I'm going to be myself. I'm going to be my authentic self. I'm not going to be like some programmed, you know, NPC. Like I say NPC, like non-playing character, but like as in I'm not going to go along with the mass consensus. I'm actively creating my reality every step of the way. So when I realize that something has been programmed onto me from the mass consciousness and from society, I automatically want to take that out and choose like who am, and really discover who am I in my authentic self and how do I want to show up and, and really fully be myself in this timeline. So this is why I'm sharing this with you because now that you, now that you have this in your brain and in your psyche, you can kind of let it sink in and really ask yourself like, is this affecting me? And if it's not, that's okay. Great. And, but if it is in some way you get to choose now, like what, what do you, how do you want to show up? Do you actually agree with this and how do you want to shift this? And one thing that I, I'm going to talk about a little bit later, but I have found in a lot of my um, workshops I do around sexuality and, and sometimes in the opening connection games for the play parties I host, I I really have people, I do like connection games. And so people like meet someone they don't know within the group and I'll have them. Some of the first things I do is have us talk about our programming around sexuality. Because when we really ask, like, because when you come to this realization that everything is programming and this is not a good or a bad thing, it just is because like our 3D reality is built on whatever we believe and our beliefs are programs that we we choose to believe. So you can kind of look at it as like a computer program. Like everything that you believe is like this computer program that's been put into you by someone, you know, your parents, religion, society, like probably between the ages of zero and seven years old is like when you're formulating all of your programs of what your belief systems are. When you realize this, you also get the power to realize that everything can be shifted. You can change your programming every any single moment. And so when you really become aware that like your sexual desires, your, you know, your insecurities, all of your stuff around sexuality, most of that is programming that happened to you before you were seven years old or, you know, like at any significant moment that something got really in there about sexuality. Um, but most of the foundational stuff is between zero and seven years old. Uh, you get to ask yourself, do I actually still want to believe this? And you can actively change it at any moment, but you have to really look at it. So a journaling prompt for you is to ask yourself, what is my earliest programming around sexuality? Like, and where did it come from? And do I still want to believe this? So I really invite you to ask yourself this and to, to journal about it and and journaling can be a voice message to yourself. It can be writing things down, but something where it's like outside of your head and into the 3D reality will give you the perspective to look at it from like an objective point of view and then really ask yourself, do I still want, do I still want this program? And do I want to jump onto a different one that's more pleasurable in my body and more empowering for me? So again, that's like, what is your earliest programming around sexuality? Do you still want to believe that? Or like who, who imprinted this in you? Like for me, it's like my religion, my parents, you know, 
uh, the first time I was sexually molested. Like these, these things are like, wow, these are, yep, these are some imprints. And then asking myself, do I still want these? Like, or do I choose to let some of these go? Um, okay. So here are some real talk for you. <laughs> Not like we weren't already talking about it, but I want to give you some really practical information on how to actively shift your sex life right now. So we were just speaking earlier about like some major programs that the masculine and the feminine hold around sexuality. So what if you realize, wow, I do have some of these programmings, but how do I actively shift this in my life? Um, and there's a couple of ways you can do this, but I want to go speak to the scenario. Like if you already actively right now have a sexual partner that you feel comfortable working through some of this stuff with. Um, and you might say, yes, I have a sexual partner, but I don't know if I actually feel comfortable working through. Well, I will tell you, you will never know unless you try, unless you're like, actually like, no, this is just someone I'm hooking up with. Then I'm like, okay, you get to decide whatever you feel safe with, always honor your body. But if this is someone that you have, a, uh, a relationship where you have built trust with each other and you know you're just feeling vulnerable about speaking up for these things then I will tell you you're always going to feel vulnerable it's like that doesn't go away like even if you're in a long-term relationship with someone you're always going to feel vulnerable at least initially speaking up and then like it's like a muscle speaking up about your sexuality is like going to the gym for the first time like of course when you first do it you're super awkward and fumbling around and you might have some like soreness after of like vulnerability um what do they call it emotional um there's a word in somatic experiencing where you you speak about something vulnerable oh emotional hangover it's normal to have an emotional hangover when you speak about something that you haven't spoken and it's just like going to the gym and for the first time and you're sore afterwards but then the more that you do it your muscle becomes stronger and it's so much more fun then you get kind of addicted to like speaking up for yourself emotionally and connecting emotionally with someone because it's really beautiful and you get your needs met so i'm just saying that to you that like it's a really good thing and it's okay to feel vulnerable and you got to start somewhere. Um, I also want to speak to the fact that like throughout my own sexual experience. So I've, um, you know, I've, I've dated a lot of men and, and women. And um, I, I don't want to sp- say this is everyone, but for the feminine in me and for a lot of my girlfriends, who, when we were first learning how to speak up for ourselves, this is the thing. <laughs> it's like this chicken and egg thing. Like, men have performance anxiety because they worry that if they don't perform well in bed, like if they don't, like, you know, make her feel good in bed or do whatever is the thing that they think is going to be successful, then the woman will no longer want to have sex with them. And women, because we have a hard time speaking up because of our programming, this is actually true. Like, and this is the thing I want to shift in everyone um, because I have done this for many years. Like I was sleeping with someone and I felt so awkward and vulnerable and scared to speak up about whatever it is that wasn't fulfilling me sexually in bed that I just stopped having sex with this person and like kind of moved on. And this is where I think it's really important that we start investing in ourselves and each other because, um, (laughs) so for instance, I'll just give you a little story. Like I had someone that I was sleeping with and he just, you know, he, he like just wouldn't like give me oral sex. And I was like, I... And I, I'm, you know, I'm no, I do not require someone to go down on me in order to have sex with them like all the time, but it is something that I would enjoy and I very much enjoy. And so at first I was like, should I just not sleep with him anymore? Cause also I'm very, this is a funny word to say, but a generous, like I love giving pleasure to the men that I'm with and the women that I'm with. And so I'm very like, yeah, I will, you know, give you a blowjob or go down on you. And when it's not reciprocated, that for me goes like, oof, like is 
because I never think that there's something wrong with me. Like I know that men and women love going down on me and there's like, there's nothing wrong in my body happening physically. But I was like, well, maybe there's something going on with them or their connection with me. They don't feel comfortable. Um, and I was just kind of like, well, do I actually care enough about this person to talk to them about it? And then I hit this moment where I was like, you know, I kind of had this feeling that like maybe I, I know I, I knew I knew that this wasn't the person I was going to spend the rest of my life with. But also I had this realization that one, it's really important for me to start speaking up for what I want and need in bed. And also for the next person that this person's this guy sleeps with, I want them to enjoy the situation. So I want to like speak up for like all the future pers- people that this this guy is going to sleep with. Like, hey, just so you know, it's nice when you go down on a woman. So anyways, I spoke to him and I found out that his religious programming, he thought it was super gross to go down on a woman. And I was like, wait, what? And this is like, we had, you know, already traveled to another country together on holiday, like all these things. And I was like thinking that he was just shy and like, you know, like this is just something we can work out and giving him lots of like opportunity and time. And then I had a very direct, nice conversation with him. And he was like, no, I've never gone down on a woman and I never will. And I was like, what? Um... And then I was like really kind of pissed off because I was like, this guy is like, you know, super hip, you know, beautiful man. But his religious programming, I think he's Muslim, like was just like, no, it's really, it's really uh, dirty to go down on a woman. And I was just like, I don't know. I don't know if this is all Muslim. So I'm not like saying that's a thing with that religion. Um, But this was my personal experience with this person. And I was like, this is not okay with me. And I already had like given him many blowjobs and I was like, this is not equal. And he's like, I'm like, so I I would be okay with this if you're okay with me never giving you a blowjob again. And he was like, oh no, I wouldn't be okay with that. I, I love it when you give me a blowjob. And I'm like, do you not see how this does not go back and forth? Like we need this to be <laughs> reciprocal. But I'm, and I I said to him straight up, I was like, I cannot be in a relationship with you where this is, where you, you think it's dirty to go down. Like that doesn't make me feel good in my body. And I'm just straight up not okay with this. Like I need this energy to be flowing back and forth. And also I really enjoy oral sex. And, um, and you know, this is something where like, if you're in an open relationship and, you know, or you're seeing each other casually, but also this guy wanted to date me and like potentially marry, he was very in love with me and wanted to like in the future marry me. And I was just like, I'm not going to accept the reality where the rest of my life, I'm never going to receive oral sex. Like this is not okay. So that's just one example of how direct communication is really good. But um, there was, there's tons of stories I could share, like there's positive stories also where I just spoke up and I was like, hey, this is like, this doesn't really feel good in my body or I just want you to know I really enjoy this thing in bed. And the guy was like, wow, thank you so much for telling me. Like literally no one has ever like spoken to me about what they like in bed. So they're just running around like in the dark, literally sometimes and figuratively trying to figure out what we like. And really, honestly, really wanting to please us and and make us feel good in our bodies and then, you know, enjoy this pleasurable experience together. And a lot of women are just like, like, if you're watching the video, I'm just like frozen, constricted, just like, ah, you know, I'm hoping that they figure it out and just kind of stumble into the part of my body that I really enjoy. It's it's like, can we please help each other to enjoy more pleasure here? Like, this would be great. But how do we talk about it? So this is the part where I'm like, I want to give you some practical tips because when we go into these conversations, there is so much programming on it and also defense mechanisms that um, are protecting this programming. And when you have a defense mechanism come up, it's it's to protect you because you're worried something worth like you're worried that if you give up this programming something worse is going to happen and I will tell you that I know straight up why this is it's like most of the time we don't want to talk about 
you know, anything around our sexuality because we're worried that the conversation will make us feel like worse. Like we're going to somehow be found out that we're not worthy of love or connection or, you know, the, our partner doesn't think we're good in bed, you know, all the things, all the negative things that you can think of. And so it's sometimes for a lot of people, it's just better to just not talk about it and just shut it down. But I believe, and I have proven, so this is why I'm sharing this with you, that you can speak about this and have it significantly improve your sex life with the partner you already are enjoying sex with or you want to enjoy sex with and you're already connecting with. So instead of looking at each other like we're these tender profiles that we can just keep swiping through until we find the one that just magically does everything perfectly, that doesn't, it doesn't work like that. And even if, and even if you have this amazing connection with your partner, physically, emotionally, sexually, it can always be improved through communication. But how do you actually bring this up? Because if you bring it up with someone, like for me, I've had men bring it up with me, like anything around sex, and I'm like, just frozen more. And then, you know, when I was first like getting going, talking about sex, because I was just like, uh, I don't know, you know, whatever you want. And, da, da, da. and this is like the programming that we as women have around like, just accepting whatever is happening. And this is like, even in conversations where the men, the men I was with was just like, No, I want to know what you like. What do you and I'm like, I don't know, everything's good. It's like, that is not helping. Don't do that. Like actually feel into your body or ask yourself, why do I have such a resistance to talk about this? Is it because I don't feel safe right now? Is it because I need to figure out like a better way for this to be brought up with me? But one thing I will tell you is that just as a foundational rule, never talk about what you want to improve on your sex life right before or after you have sex. Like just straight up, do not do it. Because this is so, this gets you in your analytical mind. And this also is, it's just really hard to get from there back into your pleasure body where you're just like open to giving and receiving pleasure to each other. Unless you are very, like, I've gotten to this point now where, um, I mean, this is, this is different than like, you know, in the middle of sex and something's like, oh, that doesn't really feel good. Or can we try this? Like, that's amazing. Go do that. Like, I do that all the time where, you know, I'm doing a position with my partner and then I'm like, "Mm, this doesn't really feel good. Or I really actually want you to do doggy style right now. Can we do that? And they're like, yeah, sure. Um, but I'm talking more about like, your deeper needs around sexuality or you know you bringing up this uh, for instance the story I was just talking about like so why do you never go down on me you know like this is probably better to talk about like when you have all your clothes on if you normally wear clothes like I actually I mean like when you're not in a sexual situation (laughs) I was laughing because I'm actually naked most of the time but um you know, like when you're both sitting on the couch or, and what I found is that it's nice to give each other, if this this is the first time you guys are ever talking about sex, like in a conscious way, which means like you're actively facing it and like sharing it with each other, then it's really good to be like, Hey, I just want to give you a heads up. I want to talk about our sexuality. It's all, and then say, it's all super positive. I want to just like bring up some stuff that, you know, I'm excited to share with you. And so when you bring it out, it's like, we're doing this and you can say like, I want to do this as a team. And I was just like, I want to open this dialogue with you. The person might still get a little constricted, whether it's a masculine or feminine, but at least you're bringing it up and like you're setting the tone of like, Hey, I'm super excited to talk about this. It's really positive, And I want us to do this as a team together. And you can ask, is right now a good time for you? Or do you want to talk about it later? Because they might be in the middle of something or maybe they just emotionally need to have some like prep time of like, ooh, you know, we're about to talk about something that, you know, they have a lot of programming around. So their defense mechanism might need some time to like calm their nervous system. Um, And yeah, and just always make sure that you ask each other um, or tell each other we're doing this as a team. This is the thing that I think is super important, especially when you have this programming of like, performance anxiety and not speaking up this this is two sides of disengaging of of being a team and I always believe that 
the best sex and sexual connection is when both people are co-creating this beautiful energy connection, physical connection with each other. This is like you're making art together by flowing energetically together in a sexual way. And that is something where both people need to actively show up and be like fully engaged and fully present and fully open and communicative. So it takes, as they say, it takes two to tango. It takes two people to actively be engaging and and showing up fully in order for it to be a really beautiful experience. Another thing that you can... So if you're nervous to, to like talk directly about the thing that you want to bring up, so let's just, you can be like, you know, you're nervous to say like, oh, I would love for you to go down on me or to give me blowjobs more or, you know, I want us to have sex more often. If you're nervous to talk about those things directly, which is okay, I invite you to say, another option is to say, hey, I want to open some dialogue around our sexual you know, just sexuality in general, like I want to feel more empowered in my sexuality. Will you do this with me? And then you can ask each other. The first thing you can do is say, what is your programming around sexuality? Like really, like where did it come from? And for me, this is like a kind of a a thing I do automatically with my partners because, and also it's because I work in sexuality. And so I'm always just super curious, like where are they at in their sexuality? Um, and it's pretty obvious where I'm at because I'm like out here <laughs> leading a lot of it and guiding other people into their sexual empowerment. But I'm also super open about my, you know, my past and my sexuality. So a lot of men that come to me, they already, you know, they've listened to my podcast. They know that I organize play parties. So they, they know where I'm at sexually, but I would love to know where they're at. And I'm also happy to have this be something where we talk about together. Um, and when you do it like that, it's kind of like you're, this is the beginning of you guys working as a team consciously in your sexual experience and exploration because you're like standing side by side looking at your programming. Like, yeah, okay, I was raised in this religion. I was a virgin when I got married. What was your programming on sexuality? And they could be like, oh, well, my parents never talked about it. I learned it through porn. You know, like my first time I really lo- saw a naked people having sex was like you know on a porn site and I thought that's what sexuality or sex was and you know da 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 so when you have this information it's so nice because then you can build on that foundation of like oh that's why you have this thing around your sexuality because that's your foundation and like do you want to change this and then this is where you can start growing in your conversation your communication with each other because you kind of have this like accepted um foundational information about each other and I think it's really beautiful the more that we are able to speak about our sexuality the more we are unlocking different parts of our psyche of like what do we want and what is our desires and how do we want to grow because I I really believe our sexuality when used in in a healing way can be one of the biggest like unlocking in our in our lives it's like it can unlock our desires our pleasure our manifesting our connection it's like and this is if you look at it from that perspective it's understandable why it's one of the most suppressed things because it's actually the source of some of our biggest creativity and our power and our connection to each other so why you know if you look at the way the world is right now why wouldn't they suppress that about ourselves and especially for women like our sexuality is one of our biggest superpowers and our connection to our bodies and our life force and if you look in the world today women sexuality is one of the biggest repressed things so this is why I say it is such a rebellious beautiful thing for you to connect to your sexuality and to be really empowered in it and then the next thing that you can talk about, so I'll give you some more things you can talk about when you're you're sharing this with your partner is ask each other what's your fantasies and your desires and your curiosity and your boundaries around sex. Like in one of my earlier podcasts, I give this recommendation to hang out with a person you're interested in having sex with. Hang out with them four different times before you decide if you want to have sex with them. And when I started doing this is when I 
really started to understand how empowering it was to talk about to communicate about our sexuality and our desires with each other and actually how sexy it was like for me to do this with someone before we actually had sex because it was so empowering it was like my body could decide through this information if it felt safe to connect with this person and explore more with them and it was so nice to have this information before I opened my body to them because sometimes you communicate and you realize like, wow, we really aren't that aligned in our sexuality and that's okay. And that's like beautiful because at least you're growing in that. And then in other ways, it's like amazing foreplay because you're like, wow, I didn't know that you were into that. I am so into that. Let's explore that together. So for me, like some examples of boundaries is like, I don't really enjoy having anal sex and that's okay. And that's something that I share with my partners and, you know, I've tried, I've tried, I've attempted it a couple times. I just do not like it. There's other things I enjoy around anal, but like not, I do not enjoy anal penetration with a penis. And this is something I'm very vocal about with my partners and it's okay. And it's beautiful. And it's like, okay, at least they know. And at least my body not at least, my body can feel safe to open up to them knowing that that is off the table because that's a boundary that I have and it's really important for me to communicate that with my partner and also to understand, like (laughs) I did this with someone where we were communicating, we were doing the four dates thing and I found out that anal play, anal penetration is very important to this guy and he was like, oh, you're not into that? And I'm like, no, I'm not really into this. And he's like, this is the thing that I love. Like I, this is my favorite thing about sex. And I was like, maybe we are not aligned. And for many other reasons that included, we didn't, we never ended up having sex. And I'm so grateful that I knew this. And we had this conversation before we ended up having sex. And then like uh, some examples for me of like fantasies um, that I have is like, I have had a fantasy in the past of playing sexually with two men and I find this to be a really interesting thing to share because um if you ask a lot of people around like their sexual fantasies a lot of like I've I've read some studies and stuff that a lot of women have desires to have you know sexual play with two men but they are so shy to say this out loud but if you look at this on these anonymous surveys it's like right there like at the very top is like women having you know sex with two men but in today's society it is so accepted that men can openly share that they want to have a threesome with two women like you know it's like I've had so many men that I've dated be like are you sure you don't like that girl? Are you sure you don't find her attractive? Can we please have a threesome? And And I would always say, look, I am so open to having a threesome with a woman, but I am more attracted to men. Like I play with women sexually. I've dated a woman before. I love women, but they're not like, it doesn't like turn me on to have a threesome with a guy and a girl in the same way that I get very turned on with the idea of having a threesome with two men. So if you're okay with us doing both and basically like I'm okay to have a threesome with another woman and my partner, if you like, I'm saying this to my partner, if you're okay with us having a threesome with another guy and every single one of them up until now have said, no, I don't, I don't feel comfortable having a threesome with a man. And I'm like really annoyed by that because this is not, does not seem fair. And also it feels like so much programming around sexuality And it was actually through my play parties that I was able to fulfill a lot of these fantasies around interacting sexually with two men because I feel like there's a lot of like, I've asked, I've asked the men that I've dated, like, why are you not okay with this? And there's just like this, like this thing around like two penises being involved in the picture and like one vagina. And I'm like, but that's great because like I can have infinite amount of orgasms and men can only have one orgasm at a time and then they have to pause, you know? And I don't know. It's just like this, like this feeling of like me- a lot of men that I've asked. I'm, again, this is only surveying the men that I've dated. I've dated a lot of men, but they, they have said like, I just don't feel comfortable with another dick, like in the picture when I'm, I'm sleeping with you. Like, I don't want to watch you having sex with another, another guy. And I'm like, but you're okay with me watching you penetrate another woman. Like what that doesn't make sense in my head. 
And it, that's just, I think, and I think a lot of this is societal programming of like the masculine being like, that's mine. Like she's mine. I can share with other women. Like I can, I can go penetrate another woman, but I'm not okay with my woman being penetrated by another man. Like she's mine. And this is programming that I think we as a society need to let go of because it doesn't make any sense. And women are not property that are owned. And if you have this programming, I'm not saying that that's the reason that you're looking as, at women as objects, but I do think that some of this programming is very deep and it is where a lot of it comes from, where women are just not allowed to have sexual desires and men are allowed to have all of them and act on them. Because for the last couple hundred years, this is actually what's been going on. And in my play parties, I was usually throughout my play parties, um, I would be dating someone casually and I'd invite them to play party. Um, and so, you know, and I would, they would know this is the accepted thing that I'm going to play with other people and that we're open, like everyone's on board and everything's okay. And so, and the play parties are no penile penetration. So I actually really enjoyed this dynamic at my play parties because men feel a lot more open to like, you know, multiple men playing with one woman because there's no, there's no penile penetration. There's no like dick and vagina situation happening. So I feel like this like machismo, um, you know, like she's my woman and I'm putting my dick in her. I, this is all sounding really bad, but you under, like, uh, and I'm, I'm speaking straight up here. This is like a lot of our programming that we have. And then it's kind of this competitiveness that comes out in men of like, but I want to penetrate her and she's mine and I love her. And, you know, by me penetrating her, I'm claiming her. And I'm like, I don't agree with any of that. And I get to choose who is in my body and who I receive pleasure from. But anyways, I feel like the play parties help with releasing some of this programming because I've had two multiple times where I've had two men that I have slept with in the past be at my play party together and I ended up playing with both of them at the same time. And one of them that I want to share because it was very hot and it was very much fulfilling my fantasies was I really enjoy being tied up like uh, with ropes. So shibari is what they call it. And I just love the dynamic of fully surrendering because in my life I'm usually in control and I'm usually hosting things and running things and being like the one in charge and when I am being tied up I have to fully surrender and it's beautiful and it, when I do it with someone I feel really safe with I love surrendering and I just find that the power dynamics so sexy and of course again in a way that's really respectful and like they're really taking care of me and they're making sure I feel safe and you know, all this stuff. So this one time, this guy was tying me up from behind. He was, he was behind me and like tying up my arms and like kissing me when he was tying me up and like grabbing my boobs and like, you know, doing all this stuff. And then this other guy that I have slept with, and I also, you know, found both of them very hot. And, uh, this other guy came over and like, you know, checked in like visually with me if it was okay. And I like nodded and he started going down on me. And so the guy from behind is like kissing me, grabbing my hair, tying me up and grabbing my boobs. And the other guy's going down on me. And there is a room full of people around. And like, I am just moaning and fully enjoying myself and like came most multiple times. And also tons of people are watching me and I'm an exhibi exhibitionist. So I get off on people watching, people watching me enjoy myself. And I had so many women come up to me afterwards and say, wow, that was so empowering to watch you receive pleasure. And thank you for, because I always say that again, play parties, uh, watching is also uh, participating. If you have the energy of honoring the experience, like we're all in this together, we're all in this beautiful sexual, sexual exploration together. And if we feel safe to be watched and, you know, like it's like beautiful, we can learn from each other and we can honor the experience. And they were like, wow, thank you so much for like just kind of showing me that it's okay to like just be free in my sexuality and allow myself to receive pleasure. And, and I was like, I'm happy you're happy because I was very much enjoying myself. So this is, I'm sharing this with you because one, I think it's like very normal to have these type of fantasies. Two, it's beautiful to act them out in ways that we feel safe. And, and you know, up until this point, I actually have, I have never had a threesome with two men with penetrative sex. 
And it's not because I haven't had all the offers in the world. Um, I've had many beautiful men that wanted to do this with me. But I, I f- although I am very uh, sexually expressed and, you know, very much enjoy my sexual freedom, I also b- view it as this really beautiful emotional connection and like spiritual connection. And I, I view this as like something like if I'm going to do this with someone, I want it to be like two men that I have such a strong emotional, physical, spiritual connection with. And it's something where it's flowing all the way through. Like it's only going to turn me on if they both are into it. If they both, like I feel really safe with both of them. They feel okay with each other. I actually don't get turned on watching men have sex with each other. I just want them both to penetrate me. (laughs) And um, so it can be two heterosexual men you know, that both just want to pleasure me and take turns pleasuring me and just all of us being in bed together. Like I'm just sharing some sexual fantasies with you, but I hope by, by doing this, it's normalizing it for you and normalizing talking about it because this is what's so beautiful is that sex is there to be celebrated and talked about and enjoyed and uh, all the things. So this is, I mean, (laughs) I went off on a little tangent, but I think you enjoyed it. I hope so. Um, this is an this is an example of things that you can speak about with your partner and or your friends, you know, if you just like whoever you're feeling comfortable to practice sharing about your sexuality with and who have earned the right to your trust. And um another thing you can talk about is what you actually get turned on by. Um because for instance, like um I've noticed that a lot of people have this programming that like you have sex, like once you're in a, like a committed partnership or, you know, it's not like the first time you've had sex, but it's kind of this like programming that like we have sex at the end of the day or like after we've gone out and then we have sex and we go to bed. I have realized that for the most part, like last night I had sex right before I went to sleep, but for the most part in my sexual desires, I am not turned on um right before I fall asleep like when I'm falling asleep I want to go to sleep like my body is tired and so it wants to go to bed it does not feel super open to have sex so I've kind of tested it out you know having sex in the morning in the afternoon evening everywhere in between and I actually found that for me what turns me on the most is having sex right after I have a nap in the afternoon because I wake up, I do like all the things that I want to do, you know, active, making podcasts, you know, reading and exploring and exercising, whatever activity I'm doing that day, my routine. And then I rest a little bit. I allow my body to like really, you know, sink in to my body. And, you know, even if it's like a 15, 20 minute nap, I feel so turned on after that. And also I still have a lot of energy in me to, you know, life force energy that I want to use and use for sexual enjoyment is amazing because at the end of the day, my life force energy is pretty like gone. I'm like, I'm tired. I want to recharge and then start over tomorrow. So this is something where like you can, you can start asking yourself like, when do I actually get turned on? Like what time of day and what, what activities beforehand like for me uh knowing that I've like gone to the gym in the morning and feeling good in my body like having just showered done my hair maybe done my makeup like you don't need all these things but I just know that when I want to feel really juicy in my body these are things that make me feel good and feel sexy and um and also just like taking care of myself making sure I'm getting massages and like I'm just really like going to the sauna like I'm feeling good in my body because this makes me as the in the feminine feel a lot more receptive to receive pleasure and in the masculine it might be like like I know for Faraday like going to the gym like having sex right after he gets back from the gym is like he's like ready to give pleasure and like you know like this is like the masculine being like oh I'm ready to go I'm pumped da 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 and this can this is not like a feminine masculine thing like you can when whatever way you get turned on, you are allowed to get turned on in that way. Give yourself permission, but just start checking in with your body on like, when is the the time of day that I get turned on? And what, what am I doing right before that I've noticed like, oh, I get turned on right now. Like it took me a couple years to realize 
oh, I, I am the most turned on right when I'm waking up from a nap and I'm still kind of in this dream state of like in between the spiritual world and the physical world and my body feels really loose and yummy and receptive. So these are fun explorations to do. Um, so one another thing I want to say again is that communication is power. So the more we feel brave to communicate and feel safe to to talk about our sexuality and to share our sexuality, uh, you know, like in a communicative way with our partners and whoever we're about to have sex with, or we want to have sex with, or we're already having whatever, just talking about it is what helps us to have better lives all around. Because I can't tell you the amount of people who have come to my play parties and then tell me the next day, men, women, all genders have said, I feel so empowered in my whole life right now and I'm like that's so interesting like why do you feel more empowered in every avenue of your life and this is because our sexuality is our connection to our creative life force and also it's a big connection to our personal power and so when you really reclaim this and you you speak up for what your desires are and you share about what you enjoy and what you want in bed it can activate you in all areas of your life in your career, in your, you know, in your, your relationships with your friends, your family, everywhere, because you're like, you're really owning who you are, and you're speaking your truth. So um, there's a lot more I want to say, but I think I'm going to share it in the next podcast. And I love that this one's already almost 50 minutes long. Um, I'm going to share I'm my next course, we're releasing our course right now. And um, it's about how to become your most authentic self and how to actually live your your ep- most epic timeline. And these are things I've talked about in my podcast before, but this course is the most in-depth I've ever shared about this. It's very practical. It gives you tons of like homework and tips. And also it's a lot of stuff that like, and also Faraday's on some of the episodes and stuff that we've never shared before. So it's like, super I'm super excited to share it all with all of you we've put a lot of energy into it and a lot of love and then so that's coming out soon if you don't if yeah and if it'll be on vegansavage.com so look up that vegansavage.com uh slash Brittany Bond um I think we are actively going to release it in the next couple days um so by this podcast releasing we might already have it I'm not sure but just stay tuned check our Instagram stories And then the next one after this, uh, the one I'm actively working on right now and starting to research and and feel inspired by and start making the content for is the next course is going to be about sexuality and all about like in-depth empowering ourselves and our sexuality. So I would love to hear from you on Instagram if you want to message me any questions you have around your sexuality, uh, anything that you would love to be in the course, included in the course. And we're going to deep dive on this together. Like I uh, am happy to say that I do not know it all. I don't want to know it all because life is a journey. It's an exploration and a discovery and a remembrance of our power. And I'm so excited to go on this journey with you and for you and investigate all these things about sex and to come back and report and share and be more and more empowered together. So I hope that this episode was helpful and just take a deep breath and know that you're doing amazing and just speak up more and be rebellious in your sexuality by allowing yourself to receive pleasure because it's so much fun and that's the reason why we're here to enjoy these timelines and to remember our power okay this is Brittany Bond reporting live from Turkey and I'm sending you guys lots of love hope you have a beautiful day